One visualization option I didn't mention in my previous video is guide geometry. HDAs let you select a node in your asset and have it show up in the viewport as a wireframe. Sometimes this is perfect and it's all you need, and other times it can be a bit limiting. That being said, here's how you can use it. We're going to make this super quick slicer setup that slices our geometry into slabs along its long axis. In this HDA, we have a toggle called Show Guide Geometry, and when we enable it, we can see where our cuts were. Guide Geometry only shows up in the viewport when the display flag is on your node, and it also it does not get output downstream. So let's get started and build this setup together. Drop down an empty geometry object, dive inside. We'll start out with a rubber toy for some test geometry, and I'll add a null as a little placeholder input. And the first thing we want to do is find the long axis of our geometry. And we can do this by making a bounding box and then using a measure sop to find the area of all the faces. And we'll sort the primitives by that attribute called area. And we're going to keep the two smallest faces. Since we sorted our primitives by area, these are primitives 0 and 1. Next, let's grab the centroids of each of those primitives so that we have a point in the middle and connect them with an add sop. This will give us a line. And when we resample that line, we'll see that we'll get several points in the middle, which we can use to copy some cutting geometry onto. Let's make a little room, and we're going to grab one of the faces of our bounding box, and we're going to use that as the cutting geometry and copy it to those points on that line we just resampled. We use a match size sop to bring it to the origin and a poly expand 2D to cheat it out just a little bit. Now we can drop down the copy sop and copy our grid to the points on our line. Now we can see this is going to be our cutting geometry. The last thing we need to do is drop down a boolean fracture sop, plug our input geo into the first input and our cutting planes into the second input. And if we check out the result, we don't see much in the viewport right now, but if we drop an exploded view down, we can see that we've sliced our geometry into a bunch of slabs down the long axis. We can control the number of slabs by going to the resample and changing the number of segments under the maximum segments section. In order for us to be able to add guide geometry, we need to make this into an HDA. So let's grab all of the nodes of our setup, not including that exploded view, and collapse it down into a subnet. We can right click, go to digital asset, create new, and just fill out the digital asset parameters as you like. I'm going to store this one in just my user preferences directory, and I'm going to call it slice demo. You can hit create, and then we get the type properties window. If we head over to the node tab, we can see there's a field called guide geometry. But since we don't actually have a node that we're going to use for our guide geometry, we can't do anything with this yet. So let's hop back inside our node and designate some geometry to use for the guide. So first I'm going to scoot everything over to get it back on the grid. And then I'm just going to drop a null sop down and connect it into that copy to points where all of our slicing geometry is. I'm just going to call it capital guide. And then we'll hop up and go to the type properties for our HDA again. The guide geometry field is expecting a relative path to the node inside the HDA, which in our case is just guide. Now we can see in the viewport we've got some blue wireframe guide geometry that's turned on. When the display flag is on your node, the guide geometry will always show up, which could be annoying. We should give our users the option to disable it. We can do this by adding in a switch before our guide geometry null. I like to use a switch if sop with our guide geometry plugged into the first input and nothing plugged into the second input. Then we can tell it to use that second empty input if any or all of the conditions below are false. If we toggle that expression from 1 to 0 and jump up to the top, we'll see that our guide geometry is gone. Let's add a control for it at the top level of our HDA. So let's right click, go to the type properties for our node, and then we'll dive back inside, head over to the switch if sop, and drag in that first enable slider into the parameter section. I'm going to call it something like show guide, give it a label of show guide geometry. We'll make it a toggle type parameter, and I'm just going to default it to on. Hit accept, and when we jump up to the top, we'll see we've got a toggle that says show guide geometry, and when we toggle it, it turns on and off. Cool, so the last thing I think we should do is add a little bit of color to this, since the default blue wireframe can be a bit limiting. We'll dive inside again, and just before our switch, Let's add in a point wrangle. 
whenever you're adding color or alpha to your guide geometry, it's important that you're doing it on points. Unless you have open primitives, like you already have it as a wireframe, and then you can add the color or alpha to the primitives. In this case, I'm just gonna generate a random color based on the primitive number for the point. And this will work for us since each one of our cutting planes is only a single primitive. When we jump back up, we can see that we have different colored wireframes for each one of our cutting planes, and we can turn them on and off with that show guide geometry toggle. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.